Hi everyone, we are going to uh, continue our chapter five, uh, managing technology and knowledge for MPSW5033 engineering technology and management. So uh, as the last part of this chapter, we are going to cover managing research and development. This is the outline for our session today. Definitions, we're going to cover the definition. We're going to see what are the meaning of research and development from different perspectives, uh, classification of research and development, fundamental dilemma, relationship with business strategies, technology leverage and R&D strategies, and we're going to conclude our present, our session with estimating R&D expenditure. So many research and development. So we have, uh, this is the definition. We have a two different definition um, from different perspectives. The first one is academia, which is the researcher, the academics, lecturers, the higher institution people. It is the systematic approach to discover, to the discovery of new knowledge. And for industry, it's a continual activities with scientific knowledge and concepts directed toward the production of useful materials, devices, systems, or methods, including design and development of prototyping processes. So this is two different perspectives of the R&D. So usually we, we, we heard people say uh, university is not coming up with the technology. Uh, no, there's too many uh, words thrown out to the academia but if we see from the definition here for the research the academics the university the research at the academia they come up with the new knowledge okay so we call it more fundamental okay? it's fundamental it's a fundamental research fundamental okay fundamental while this fundamental uh, will give some insight how they can uh, continue the research for the application. So this is to, towards the applied uh, industry. So the main activities in industry, uh, industrial R&D is discovering and develop new technologies Okay, they have an existing technology and they want to upgrade, they want to find out new innovation on the technology. Improving understanding of technology and existing products. Improving and strengthening understanding of technologies used in manufacturing or in specific field. Understanding research results from universities and other institutions, which will complement each other. So classification of R&D, we can say uh, this R&D research and development can be viewed as two sides of the same coin, okay? So the first side is research activities. We call it fundamental research, uh, which is the explore uh, to determine the new compound, new, you know, new methods. It's like a basic uh, research. We could say fundamental research or, or basic research. And second side of the coin, we are using the coin uh, analogy here. And the second side of the coin is development of products, which is applied research. Okay. So this is the two classification of the R&D. Fundamental research and applied research. So why this R&D is important? So we, we know, okay, uh, even we can link to our previous session. Uh, it is very important for us to compete in the market, especially the business, uh, the profit-oriented organization. Okay, so they need to strive uh, to be to compete in the market. So basically, is um, related to the success of a business. So it's a crucial to survive uh, fast-changing environment. You know, if you you is the environment change means that the needs change the requirement change so if you are still on, uh, on the traditional phase then we are going to be uh, you know be behind far away from our competitor 
and continuous technology change, uh, competition, changing consumer preference. Okay, so your customer now is looking for different products, uh, additional features, um, better technology products. And it's also fundamental to marketing. When you do research, you know, um, you come up with new things and it's going to be your fundamental to your marketing. You're going to say that, okay, we have this compared to our competitor. So we are leading in this. So, you know, so automatically your the customer is going to give a focus to your organization. So, and, and I believe the lease can, uh, have, we, we can have more leads is going to up but we, we can we can discuss this uh, and you also can uh, think of all of the other important and i believe the most important part is to extend the product life cycle or the business life cycle. we'll just take an example as a product so we know this is the product life cycle for uh, you know for when you compare the sales and also the time you know uh, it's increasing Okay, so here where you introduce your product means that you've done is your research and development somewhere before this, right? Okay, R and D established, and then now it goes to the market. So introduce your product. Okay, let's say year year one. Okay, and then it's going to take time before it boosts. Okay, and then now you are leading. So your product is uh, you know be hot in the market. And it's going to come to one point, we call it maturity. It's mature, you know, it's mature, then it's going to decline. Okay, it's going to decline. So if you don't focus, you didn't focus on the R&D, you're going to lose. So it's going to be, con it's going to be continued by your competitor. Okay, because they are doing the R&Ds. So if you don't want, okay, so you need to do start earlier to extend okay, the features, the demand. So you, you have your, so while your, pro, your product is hot, you should have your R&D goes on. R&D. So, you know, while it's growing, you know, you need to have some additional innovation here. So by the time it comes to the maturity level, so you launch your new product, okay? We can see how, uh, how the usually the very, I mean, the short cycle is usually for the electronic components, okay? The, the, your mobile phones, your laptops, you know, the electronic gadgets. So you're going to have a, maybe after two, three months or maybe after six months, you're going to have a new product launch. Why? Because they want to keep to be in, uh, in the uh, competitive market and they want to lead the market okay and usually RD management um they have their fundamental delay okay uh, because RD is not free so this require big capital uh, so each company and every competitive environment is unique okay? and they are in in their own stage of change so R and D need to be managed according to specific heritage and resources of the company in its competitive industry. So it's, it's different industry, different thing, right? Yeah, they have a low pace industry. You have your medium pace industry. You have a quick pace uh, industry. You know. Uh, so, but you still need to think of these r and things. So the need to provide an environment that fosters creativity at the same time providing a stable environment for the businesses. So what are the delay? So, excuse me, where precisely to invest? Okay, uh, it's like confusion, okay? Which project and technology to invest? So when to stop pouring money into a project? So your existing project, you know, you believe this can go far, go far away, and then looks likely to fail, but could yet, deliver animals. So you don't know when, I mean, maybe it's mature, you can still go on, but you don't know when it's going to push down. Or do you have a sufficient, um, you know, do you have a sufficient capital in your company? Yeah. And recently, I mean, if you take uh, taking into consideration recent, uh, you know, 
pandemic COVID-19. So all the indies, all the industry are really struggling. Okay, most of the companies are you know looking for uh, divisions or alternative businesses. So do you think in this kind of uh, environment they are going to focus and going to look on the R&D? Yes, maybe. But how about the others? They are actually struggling to compete, struggling to stable, uh, to make profit. So that's the dilemma. Okay. And again, uh, R&D, we need to always refine back with the business strategy of the company. What are the aims of the businesses? Okay. So they need to make sure uh, they understand, they know what are their aims. And usually it's profit. Okay, all the companies, they are not doing charity, they are doing profit, so they want profit, profit and profit. So, this is the matter to plan and think how, how this R&D can contribute to fulfill their aims, which is to have a increased profit continuously. So here, the importance of the R&D. And this is uh, the technology level is analogous. Okay, so this is the level. Okay, when you start the R and D things, especially in relation to technology. So we have uh, break the mold. <clears throat> then it's going to be technology mastery. We're going to see in the next slides detail leverage. And then once you master the technology, you're going to be compete competitiveness the level, and then you're going to survive. Okay. So we have uh, two types of uh, R&D here mm, uh, for maintenance. So they're doing it for their survival and also the competitiveness. So we make sure they are in the, in the, in the mainstream. And <clears throat> another part, okay. So uh, for existing, this is for the existing businesses. And for growth, what's your future? Okay, so they need to break the more plan the new thing before they can uh, do technology mastery before. I think this uh, somehow is good. They have their correlation to this one. But basically, this is for maintenance, for, for sustaining the business and in the uh, market that you, are, that you are in now, and at the same time, you're focusing for growth. What's next? Okay. Uh, so survival rules or problem solving, research on process or product, this is the explanation for, uh, for the technology leverage just now. You have the competitiveness research or on product improvement and process improvement to compete. The amount of R&D for high technology is higher than R&D for low technology. Okay, they are saying here automotive industry compared to food and beverage uh, industry, right? Of course, uh, the automotive industry, the amount of R&D is, uh, is higher. Technology mastery, here is the explanation, research on technological development, okay, and it's for the new technology, and of course, it's higher by the expenditure, and break the mold is like, uh, you're developing a new patentable technology, so very uh, new uh, technology to be explored, it's in, involve a higher level of basic scientific research, okay, so when they say basic scientific research means that it's a fundamental research, okay, fundamental research. So now things and issues are related on the budget. So we are going to see uh, some points on uh, setting the R&D budget. So basic concept of R&D is enable profit from today's successful businesses, okay? Which these profits okay, should be invested into what the company hopes will become profitable businesses of the world. So it's a sustainable uh, business. You're not just thinking of money that you get today and how you're going to, uh, you know, uh, use the money, but use the money for profit for the next days, for the coming days, and it should continue like that. So why the companies, the organization should consider spending between 10 to 25% of their sales on R&D, okay? 10 to 25% of sales on their R&D. So you can just... Uh, to clip your organization, your companies, are they doing something on this? Okay. 
so this is like a very basic range 10 to 25. So R&D expenditure can be based on a constant percentage. Uh, turnover provides a stable figure that grow in line with the size of the company. And a large organization with more resources can clearly afford to invest more in R&D than their smaller counterparts. So we know, although we say in the previous slide, okay, 10 to 25% of sales, you know, of sales in R&D. So, but the issue is large organization with more resources can clearly afford to invest. Okay, how about the small medium industries, the smaller counterparts, and the companies, uh, you know, uh, they need, they are still growing. So why now we can relate it back uh, to the strategic alliance that we have discussed uh, in the previous chapters, in the subchapters, how they can cooperate, collaborate with others, you know. So um, this is a uh, thing you should know this, right? R and D uh, as percentage of sales. So R and D expenditure uh, divided by total sales income and then multiply by the company. So this is how you can calculate your R and D uh, as percentage of as percentage of sales per unit. And I will share the last uh, sharing on the R&D expenditures, okay? Uh, sales based on industry sector. So what's happening? Also, we say 10 to, uh, what is now? 10 to 25, right? But you see uh, what's happening, 10 to 25. So we can just see two industry uh, that somehow in the range, okay? Uh, it's pharmaceutical and biotech, okay? Pharmaceutical and biotech, so the R&D expenditure is about 15% to sales and software and computer, 11% and close to 10 uh, is technical hardware things and rest are less than 10, right? Seven for leisure goods, like you see, electrical, electronics, aerospace, defense, automotive, five percent. Um, not sure, so aerospace, so we have, uh, if we have, we have uh, our friends from CTR and right, so is this right, you can check, okay, is it 5% the um, expended uh, sales amount is being invested on R&D, okay, chemical 8%, industrial engineering and manufacturing, so-called manufacturing, are manufacturing here, and food is, uh, I think, the lowest, Okay, so they're not, not really innovate uh, in terms of technology. They have, but they're still struggling. Usually the innovation is in terms of how they uh, present the foods. You know, we're putting all the cheeses and all the sauces, taking the good pictures virally, you know, I don't know. But this is, we are talking about R&D, how they improve the food, uh, the frozen food. So we now have many kind of uh, frozen foods and different things. Okay. So this is the, uh, expenditure based on the percentage of sales based on certain industry. So <clears throat> I think that's all uh, for the for this session. Uh, hopefully, uh, we have covered the R and D. Uh, so you you understand that R and D is very important, and we have basic R and D, the fundamental research, and also the applied research where you need the integration between the academy and also the industry. Um, so I hope uh, we, we have some understanding on, on this uh, on this R&D things. And basically, we have covered uh, all, everything, the four important subjects for managing technology and knowledge. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much for watching the videos. And I hope we, we can have a good discussion. On, on the content. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.